welcome to Parenting Parents. I'm Mixie Casanova, and we're joined here with our new member, um, an Indian ringneck named Parade. I want to apologize. I am under the weather. I do have a cold, so you may not understand everything that I say. <laughs> uh, hopefully, you can understand most of it. I was going to delay making the video, but it was requested of me a few months ago, and um, I promised that it would be up this weekend, and so I do like to keep my word. So here I am. So, we're going to be talking about nutrition. Nutrition. Everybody has different views on what to feed a parent. So, I'm doing a little piece, and it's hard to do this piece, and I'm going to tell you why. Because, one, it's hard to do the piece because parents are like people. Some people are anemic. Some people are diabetic. Some people are lactose intolerant. Some people decide to be vegetarians. It's the same thing in the parrot world, meaning um, that you may have a parrot who you have to watch their calcium levels, like for my African race. Or you may have parrots who are known to get the fatty liver disease, which is something that my Quaker is prone to, and my, my Galacopatee was also prone to that. You may get a parrot like the lorikeets that have iron storage problems. So all of this means that for each one of these, you would adjust the diet a bit. But I'm just going to do an overview quickly um, on what to feed. Now, this overview that I'm starting isn't going to include those specialized diets. So the eclectuses and the lorikeets and all of that. That will be something separate. The one that I'm talking about right now is just people, the birds that can eat the seeds, the ones that can eat the pellets, the ones that can eat the fruits and veggies, stuff like that. So... You got this parrot, and let's say it's an Indian ringneck, like Parade, or let's say, sorry, did I scare you? Um, or let's say it's an African Grey, or a Quaker, or um, what else do I have? A Black Cap Conier, or something like that. You get it, and what is it on? Maybe they have it on a seed diet. Should birds only eat seeds? That's a good question. Now, seeds can be very fatty. So I look at seeds kind of like candy. Should a human only eat candy? If your answer is no, then I guess your answer would be no, a bird should only eat seeds. So, sorry, Parade, you're bored? We have no toy. So, this is a controversial topic. Come here. Sorry. It's a very controversial topic because people, to me, it's like talking about religion. Good girl. It's like talking about religion. Or in the parent world, it's like talking about wind clipping. There's certain things that you don't want to talk about when it comes to parents because people get offended and everything like that. I just want to put it out there. I am not against however anyone decides to feed their parent. That is up to you. I am simply just stating how I feed mine. So please do not <laughs> cut off my head for stating what I'm about to state. So ratio, my ratio for feeding my parents is 60% pellets, 10% fruits, 10% veggies, and 10% seeds along with 10% table foods. I'm gonna explain each one to you guys and understand where I'm coming from. Now, I am also going to show you a post that's going to go against what I just said. However, their ratio is still great. So, either which way works, works, right? Let me talk about pellets. Why I choose to feed my birds pellets? Because I'm a very busy person, fortunately. I would love to be able to say, let me make them all of their foods. Let me be more involved as in food nutrition. But if I was supposed to do that, that would be less time. I'm going to move this right here because you can it. That would be less time for me to trade. Right? So that's my issue there. So let me talk about pellets. Sorry, I just have to move this from her. She's a little distracted. Pellets, they say, is supposed to be for every parrot and it's supposed to be like a well-balanced diet and everything like that so my pellets of choice is 
care sense. Sorry, I just read something on the bag that I never read before. <laughs> so my palette of choice is Harrison's. Um, I've always had Harrison's. I've always had my parents on Harrison's. And it's, sorry, baby, you okay? And it's worked, right? Harrison's have worked for us. So I keep all of my birds on Harrison's. When Parade came to us, Parade was eating Zupreme pellets. And there's nothing wrong with them. They're nicely colored. I don't know if, I don't believe Zupreme's Supreme is not organic, and uh, I'm sure they're using some kind of dye for these colors. But anyhow, this is what she was eating. And I don't know if you guys see the first video of her, where I say my first 24 hours of her with her, she had like, she was molting really, really bad, and she just didn't look all that pretty. But within me having her, I switched her over the first day, I think it was, I put 50%. Dupree at 50% Harrison's and she switched no problem. So that was a good thing. Um, yeah, so Dupree is still pellets. I just prefer to go with an all natural organic pellet type versus a colorful one. Some people feed Rowdy Bush, some people feed um, tops, some people feed all different types of things. Yeah, I also use tops which I think is a very good option. Tops is just, I haven't really heard a lot about it. I don't know a lot of people that talk about it, but I enjoy it. So I only change it up like maybe once throughout the month, they'll get something with Tops. Otherwise not, it's usually Harrison's. That's my pellet diet, by the way. Harrison's is a pellet diet. Uh, I can show you. There's different flavors, there's different sizes, like this size is what I give my African Grey and that's called Coarse and that's what I feed the African Grey on and you need your wing, your nails clipped, sorry and um, that's the Coarse and it comes in pepper and it also comes in high potency and it also comes adult lifetime I give Grayson Coarse because of his requirements that his body needs and he also gets pepper lifetime every now and then to kind of switch up the taste right you don't want to eat the same old boring food my other parrots get the lifetime fine which is really small you guys are not gonna be able to see this i'm about to take a picture it's you see it's really really small they have something smaller than this the super fine can you imagine but yeah so that's what everybody else gets like i said i would love to do something less than what I do with pellets, but unfortunately I just don't have the time. I met a girl on the weekend who says she's not giving pellets at all. She doesn't want to do pellets at all. She's gonna sprout her seeds and give that to her um, her bird. And I thought that was great, wonderful. If I had the time, the energy, and I could do it, I would love to do that. I just don't, right? Like if I could cut down pellets and make it only be like 20% of their diets, why not? What is there in the world that we eat that we can say, oh, as long as you eat this every single day, you're getting all the nutrition, all the nutritional needs that you need. There's nothing really. So that's the pellets. So yeah, the post that I'm going to show you right now says 50% veggies, which veggies are very good. 10% fruits because fruits are high in sugar, even though it's natural sugar, it's still high in sugar. And then 40% pellets. I'm not against it. I just don't have the time because I'm really busy. And there are some days that my parents do not get any pellets and they only eat fruits and veggies and table foods and seeds. You know, and there's some days that they haven't gotten any veggies and they only had pellet seeds, fruits. It ranges, but as, as long as you know that you're getting it in their system, some way, somehow, you should be okay. Fruits, great. I like to do frozen fruits only because it, they freeze them right when they're at that prime, you know, ripe moment. Where I know sometimes what future in my house, if we decide not to eat it, it gets, you know, more past that right moment. So I do like the frozen fruits. However, if I know I have an idea or let's say I have a smoothie mix or I have something in my head for, for them, I will definitely just go out and buy organic fruits and give it to them like that. Sorry, baby. So fruits, definitely. Always your fruits. Stay away from the seeds, as in apples, 
just use apples, plums, anything that has that middle seed you want to stay away from because it can be dangerous for them. Now, personally, I've read people say that they've given it to them without any issues. I've never tried. My whole entire philosophy is err on the side of caution. Don't take a chance. If you don't know, don't risk it. That's where I come from. So, step up. Thank you. No eating the plastics. I know, you're getting bored now, right? Um, that's where I come from. Don't do it. So, I don't know if you guys are anything like me, but I will risk it. That's with the fruits. What else are there? Veggies. So, veggies, same thing. Um, they need them. They should be organic. Or, I also do frozen veggies. As you guys see, I don't know if you guys see my frozen kale. There's my frozen bagel at the front. So I'm not sure if you guys can still see that because I had to move it. But... Definitely. Fruits and veggies, definitely. You can't go wrong. It's just like us, where we always, everybody eats fruits and veggies. Veggies, I understand why the post says 50% veggies because they're not as high in sugar and they're more healthy, so that would be great. 10% fruits, they, the post says, because I guess the sugar intake. So you can decide if that's something, if you have the time and you can do more fruits and veggies, definitely, why not, right? I'm not a really good chop mixer fruit salad mixer <laughs> type of person so for me um yeah that's more time to me and because i have the lower heats yeah i already have that time being put into diets right and yeah so that's your 10 percent fruits your 10 percent veggies make sure they're organic if they're not organic just make sure you wash the hell out of them that's what it comes down to right uh my 10 percent seeds okay so i do not put seeds in their Cages. They will never get the seeds in their cages unless it's in a foraging toy. Otherwise, that they get their seeds when trading. That is how I get ten percent seeds in their diet. So I give them anything from pine nuts to uh, pine nuts to safflower seeds to sunflower seeds to. Oh, I was saying anything. I think that's it. I think that's all I give them. Yeah, I think that's it. And then um, the conjure gets spray millet. So here I have a bag of sunflower seeds. Oh, sorry, baby. So here I have a bag of sunflower seeds. Here I have a bag of some pine nuts. I'm sorry, safflower seeds. These are safflower seeds. And then I have pine nuts. I don't have any here with me. I think I ran out. At one point, it was only Grace who ate pine nuts, which is Grace by Anthony Gray. But however, now uh, Parade has shown an interest in pine nuts too. So that's good. Anyhow, that's how they get their seeds. So they only get seeds when trading. So I don't trade for the day, they don't get seeds. There has been times that I've experienced, like, experimented with these little worldly cuisine type of meals to see how they worked out. I don't really like them. I think I might as well do my own. And that's where my table food comes in. So, but, um... It's something quick. If you don't have the time to do your own, I guess, you know, it's something quick to try. So that covers my seeds, that covers my pellets, that covers fruits and veggies. And the last one was table food. So my 10% table food is my breakfast and my dinner. Basically, what I eat, they eat. So if I'm having oatmeal for breakfast, they will have oatmeal for breakfast. Oatmeal made with water, not with milk. I don't give them any dairy. I'll tell you guys what I don't give them. Um, but yeah, so they'll have oatmeal. You know, if I have scrambled eggs, they'll have scrambled eggs. If I have boiled eggs, they have boiled eggs. Whatever I have, they have, right? Unless it's, of course, one of the things that they cannot eat, which I'll cover in a second. Dinner, same thing. Whatever I have, they have. Unless, of course, it's something that they cannot eat. For example, if you guys are wondering, like, what can you feed a parent? Like, what can a parent eat? Yes, they can eat chicken. Yes, they can. Yes, they can eat turkey. Yes, they can. Yes, they can have shrimp, fish, all of those things. They can have it. So my parents get it. Breakfast-wise, I get uh, cereal. I buy um, their old cereal for them, which is the shredded wheats, the original, but that have no frosting on top. That's their cereal. They don't get milk with it. It's just the shredded wheats that they would get. Uh, what else? So that's their breakfast. Oatmeal they could get. I said I cover the eggs they get. And eggs is very important, especially for my African grade, because the calcium 
in this shell because I give them to I give it to them with their shell is good for them. So that's the table foods. Now, when giving table foods, you do want to not put too much spices, too much salt, too much any of that because it wouldn't be good to them. Now, some people said no spices, no salt, whatever. That is your own preference. I prefer my food to have flavor, so I feel like my my parents needed to have flavor. And because they can eat jalapeno peppers and chili peppers and stuff like that, I'm sure that they can they would appreciate some flavor in their food. But again, that's just my preference. Please do not cut off my head for saying this. So that's just me. So table foods, definitely. And I think that would be it. So let's cover the stuff that you have to watch. Well, you can still give them, but you have to be careful when giving stuff. Tomatoes, garlic, onion, salt, spices are on some people's list as never give it to your parent. I'm not a never person for those. I'd say you can give them a little bit, just don't overdo it, is where I stand on it. So they get it in moderation. And if you are not sure, if there's any question in your mind that makes you think, you know, maybe I shouldn't be giving this, then don't give it. Plain and simple. Don't give it. Right? So that's how that those work. And the ones that are definitely no-nos, especially even for me, I stay away from the pits of fruits. So the apple seeds, the plum seeds. Anything that has a seed in the middle, I stay away from. Pomegranate seeds don't count. <laughs> they actually love pomegranate, but it's very messy to clean. So be careful when giving those. And pomegranate's really expensive too. But at least in Canada, I don't know. So uh, the seeds of the fruits, I stay away from. They never get it. Pears, anything, anything that has a seed in the middle, they never get it. Even down to, because I'm trying to think of the pear. I don't think pear, pears don't have a seed, but... They have like a little hard area in the middle and I cut that out, right? So anyhow, so I stay away from all of that. What else do you stay away from? I stay away from avocado. That's a definite no-no. Although there has been someone that told me that they did give the flesh to them and they've been fine. That's great. Kudos to you. i rather not risk it. I don't do um, chocolate, ca caffeinated drinks, alcohol, anything like that. So basically the same thing that you would give to a dog or a cat or any type of animal like that is the same thing that you would give to them. And that is it for my take on nutrition for uh, regular overall most of the parents that are around.